I got knocked out again. Why? I wish someone would come cheer me up. Hey, Zach! Oh! Luke! Hello! It's <laughs> Luke from Team Copperhead. How you doing? Uh, I've, I've been better. I got, I got knocked out of the 32 again. But I heard, I heard you didn't. I, I heard you had the fight of your life. Not yet. We're still at it. Unfortunately. So. More work, more work on robots. <laughs> so, I, I have to admit, I, when I saw you cheering and screaming after the in-game match, it really reminded me of when I beat Tombstone. And a little piece of trivia nobody knows. Beating Tombstone in that moment, that rush afterwards, like, that was better than winning the Bounty series. It was better than winning the Giant Bolt. Like, that that rush was so amazing. And I, I could see it in your eyes. You were experiencing the same thing. Could you tell me what it was like to actually beat Endgame? And not only beat Endgame, but get to the Elite Eight while doing it? It was it was incredible. I mean, it was the best robot experience I've ever had. It was completely unexpected. I mean, did we really expect to beat Endgame? I, people had their doubts, myself included. Um, so to pull off an upset like that in such a spectacular fashion, it was it was like winning the giant nut. I couldn't have been happier with that. Uh, I would absolutely agree. When when you take out one of the giant nut winners in a must win match, there's it, it's I I've been waiting for someone else because I can never explain it. It <laughs> it's like the happiest I mean, moment of your life. Copperhead has been competing. This is our fourth season with Copperhead, and we've never made it to the top eight. And as a team, we're always, we always said, like, we thought we had a top eight robot. We always thought we had a top eight robot. And this season, we had a really good run. We were three and one in the preseason. And then we, we got Rotator. And then our, what's stopping us from getting to the top eight is Endgame, one of the best robots of all time. And Number one thinking, ranked. Dang it! We were so close to getting into the top eight, and now we have to fight Endgame. What are we gonna do? This is this is not good. So, at any point through the match, did you think this is starting to go my way? Well, I mean, we had a really wacky strategy, and it actually worked out almost almost flawlessly. Uh, it was kind of crazy our strategy, and what our strategy was was what well, well what we've learned over four seasons is that the front of Copperhead just never fails. It's just inch thick steel almost everywhere. Our weapon is incredibly durable. It almost never stops spinning. But what we notice is if we get hit in the back of the robot, we're almost done. Like most of our losses are from getting hit in the back where we, I think our frame at the back there is only maybe like eighth inch thick steel. And in BattleBots world, that's not that thick. So it was do everything we possibly can to not get hit back there. And what that ultimately meant was if we got flipped upside down, we were just going to go weapon on weapon with them, having our two weapons collide, knowing full well that this would just blast us across the arena. But the hope was that we could take the abuse, and it turns out that's what happened. So the first three hits of that match, Endgame was just annihilating. Well, they weren't annihilating us, but they were just knocking us across the arena, like hitting us like 20 feet back tremendous collisions and on that very last hit at the beginning of the fight we exploded the bearings inside of endgame's weapon so we completely disabled their weapon at that point it was just it was just going to town on those forks like we ripped off all the forks <laughs> there was very little endgame could do i mean even with their weapon down they had a great drive they were still out pushing us which was a little frustrating but we were still doing tons of damage. We ripped off all the forks. We broke half the lights in the arena. It was raining glass. <laughs> it was spectacular. Oh my god. I it was an amazing fight. It was great to see it. I uh I think you broke a lot of people's brackets playing the fantasy bracket game at home. Cause I think a lot of people saw the number one bot marching further up the bracket. And uh, how does it feel to be the underdog? I mean, being the underdog is great. 
right. Our, you know, expectations this season were pretty low for us. You know, we didn't even know if we were going to make it this season. Uh, you know, Copperhead's getting old. It's a tired, tired robot. But, you know, we're definitely the underdog. And that just made the wins that much better. I mean, we broke almost everyone's bracket. Everyone had endgame, you know, taking out Riptide and then going on to fight, you know, some other robot. Whether it's, I don't know, a lot of, I think a lot of people's brackets had, you know, endgame fighting riptide in our uh in our segment and uh that's not happening so <laughs> no and and speaking of riptide that is your next fight tomorrow on the discovery channel what yeah, yeah. now riptide. i i know it's happened but please don't tell me what happens but could you tell me what you were thinking leading up to that match i mean win or lose we were just happy to beat that game i mean we made it farther <laughs> than we ever had and that was good enough for me. I mean, we were also mentally exhausted. We ran out of spare parts a long time ago, so we've been frantically <laughs> trying to fix the robot with semi-broken parts. So we spent way more time fixing Copperhead than we ever had. Uh, it's been a real struggle, and now we have to fight Riptide. Riptide has just been annihilating robots, but what what we, we were actually feeling a little pretty good about the fight, despite the fact knowing that Riptide has an incredibly strong weapon, there are a couple things that we thought we had an advantage in. And uh, at least for me, I thought going head-to-head -head on, an, on an encounter that we had a chance of maybe winning those first weapon-on-weapon -weapon exchanges. Just because, you know, Riptide has a, a fairly wide drum, which means they cannot put any fancy attachments any narrower than the width of their drum. Where robots like Endgame, they can put any kind of fork attachment they can come up with. Um, so, uh, you know, for the Endgame fight, we were really worried about what kind of attachments they were going to put on their robot that were specifically designed to counter drum spinners. Um, it didn't end up playing out that way. But Riptide doesn't really have that luxury. Yes, they most likely have a more uh, devastating weapon. But I was feeling pretty good at the head-to-head -head encounters. And if I don't have to get fancy with driving, if you try to drive around... Get, get fancy, that's where you uh, open yourself up to mistakes. I think that's you know what happened to Hypershock in the previous episode. They try to get fancy with the driving, and that's where mistakes happen. So if we can win the head-to-head -head encounters, that would be fantastic. So I was actually feeling better going into the Riptide fight than I was the Endgame fight, for sure. Wow. Well, I cannot wait to see that tomorrow. And... If everybody would like to win some official Copperhead merch, because we have some Copperhead stickers, a Copperhead poker chip, and a Copperhead back patch, uh, please leave a comment about your favorite thing about Luke and Copperhead. And Luke's going to pick out a winner to receive this Copperhead fan pack. So, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to say to the fans before we sign off here? Just uh, keep on watching. Uh, it's going to be an amazing season finale. This is the best season of BattleBots ever. And uh, fingers crossed, we get renewed for next season. Yep. And if you'd like a chance to meet me and Diana, uh, Aaron Hill from Team Seems Reasonable Robotics, the builder of Blip and Tantrum, he is holding a watch party in San Jose that Diana, Dan, and myself will all be attending with Scorpios present. So... Tickets are on sale for that right now. It's $25 a person. They are on Eventbrite. We've left a link in the description. We will be in San Jose, California at an IMAX theater watching the finale. I hope you guys come and join us. Luke, thank you for taking the time to meet up and say hi today. It's so exciting to hear what you guys are up to and to hear the perspective of one of the final eight. And congratulations on making it so far with Copperhead. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. I love the Builder blog. Uh, it's fantastic. And uh, can't wait for the next one. Yes. All right, guys. See you later. A little floppy. I'm going to have to use this for the tail end. <laughs> See, we were working on Project Extinction, I promise. <laughs> this is the tail end of today's episode. Tail end. <laughs> <laughs>